Yeah, of course, we've got to talk about Man United. Everton, I don't really want to talk about it because I'm on Saturday, but F it, let's go. So, Man United drew 1 1 against Everton, and you know, same old questions persist over United and under the bloody um, stewardship of flipping what's his face of um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. And I don't know. I think first things first, formation and lineup wise, I didn't really have that much of an issue with it. I know Everton had a few of their first teamers out as well, two strikers in Richardson and Dominic Calvert Lewin. I forgot who other defender was out, but there was a few proper first team players. Well, obviously, Guilford Sixon's got his situation, but there was a few legit. James Rodriguez is left, right? But there was a few legit first team football players that haven't left already. I mentioned two Richardson and Dominic Calvert Loon, their first team players all the time. They're always going to play up front together. And the fact that they didn't play was um, a big favour to United in terms of their ability to maybe win the game, which obviously didn't happen. Um, the lineup, they have an issue with when it comes to United side of things. I thought everything kind of picked itself. Of course the midfield I don't want I don't want to see a, a you know double pivot of Fred or McTominay because I just don't think they complement each other or good enough on the ball to re- kind of progress the ball further the pitch Greenwood of course they have a problem with him either Marshall was was, um, was interesting um, in, what do you call it addition in there uh, what else do you have here Cavani and of course Bruno Fernandes and of course Ronaldo was on the bench some people were kicking and screaming over it but I think we should still be able to beat or to get something yeah, or to beat or to kind of late rally Everton at home. I don't think that should be that much of an issue, especially if they scored early. I mean, I don't show that issue. I don't really see it. Um, again, the ebb and flow of the game, I'd say it kind of went exactly as we expected. I thought the Martial goal was very well taken. Again, for a player that doesn't have much confidence and somebody hasn't been, um, you know, fit for a while, the fact that he was able to come onto that pass in the box and finish it so emphatically was great. He essentially just kicked it through, flipping... Jordan Pickford's hands, you know what I mean? That's how fast it was going. He couldn't stop the ball. I thought he started off pretty well. Kind of petered out a little bit towards the second half. But, you know, that's Martial for you. Like I mentioned in Sam Rose, I was talking. I think United fans want Martial to be something he's not. He's never going to be Wayne Rooney. He's never going to be running around blood and guts. Of course, mixture with skill, but that's just not his game. He's going to be more of a Dimitar Berbatov type star player for us. It's Or even for another club, it's always been his temperament. Um, so, of course, if I did have an issue with that, then, of course, second half, we kind of implode we don't really have a clue of what we're doing and then of course Andrus Towson scored a leveller and we were lucky that he didn't score a winner when Yerimina scored but it is what it is isn't it that got ruled offside but I think overall you have to kind of look at that game and think to yourself especially off the back of watching Man City play Liverpool earlier today or earlier on Sunday so there needs to be more of an honest conversation around just how far Man United are from those two teams. And if they are very far, what do people honestly think will close the gap? Because everyone that's shouting Oli out, I understand, but I don't think the manager is enough to close the gap. I think we're still going to need to fix up recruitment, maybe get a better idea of what we're going to do as a football club in terms of our vision and long-term planning when it comes to football directors. I don't think we've got the best in class. Um, there's loads of issues on board. Obviously, the training facilities, the, the flipping stadium itself. There's loads of things that are on board that we need to get sorted down. Until they're sorted down, I think we're still going to be far, 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 far behind. Um, another performance I want to point out that I thought was fairly terrible was Luke Shaw. He doesn't. He's not going to obviously get the kind of stick that he probably deserves, but him coming in immediately to the team for Teles, considering how well Teles played, I thought, um, in the midweek future in Champions League was a little bit disrespectful I think especially because if anything what it does show is that there is one rule for one and one rule for the other when it comes to performances and whether you get dropped or not for the next game because the way Luke Shaw played he shouldn't have played the next game Teller should have played at least the next game or maybe you got subbed off at half time or something but starting Luke Shaw ahead of Teller's knowing full well that he played better is just a bit of a bad show same goes for the McTominay and Fred double pivot everyone knows it doesn't work but he keeps persisting with it which essentially leads to more people questioning his management style because it clearly doesn't work so loads of kind of self owns happening all over the pitch um, again what can you do we drew 1-1 Andrew Townsend did the flipping super celebration right in the corner flag but hey it is what it is and it? it's a game of football and we just keep it moving we have to just keep it moving um, but again it's just interesting to see the tide turning with, with Ollie 
with his fans in the media, people are starting to find he maybe wiser to the fact that he might not be as good as a coach as they all thought he was. Or maybe it's just not always a place for maybe it was somebody else up above or maybe further up the food chain and saying himself above. It sounds a bit weird. And here's another article that kind of all popping up all at the same time. I think let's talk about Fabrizio Romano basically saying that allegedly um, the club is looking it's not looking for alternatives but if adults don't improve then definitely they're going to have that conversation which is interesting because I always got the impression and I think I was correct in that that for the most part United don't sack their managers unless they finish outside of the top four that's why Van Gaal got sacked right after winning the FA, FA Cup because they knew he won't qualify for the top four which of course poor show but that's the precedent they've set so if Oli's been able to achieve two top four finishes already this season or already in his short tenure at the club some on the inners will be like why don't you just give him an extra year why don't you give him 18 months of course I don't want that but if you're the board at the moment and you don't really have a head person to head up the football recruitment side of things and maybe you just decide next year who you want to do do you know what I mean maybe maybe but yeah this article here courtesy of the Telegraph says United players and daunting fixture list a problem stacking up for Man United an underwhelming deal sorry an underwhelming draw with Everton and then in the speculous way to start a difficult October for all these soul shark. Look October, look over another day, looking, confused. We're gonna get these two absolute worldies to play Europa League, you know that you know what's happening in it. These two are gonna be playing in the Europa League final. It's absolutely insane to think that Club and Man United playing in the Europa League. Which again, Ronaldo probably saying he there was no other club in the world that he could have come back to that would have had him play in the Europa League. None. Not even sport in Lisbon. <laughs> uh but yeah, I'm not reading all that. But you know, the 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 tide is changing, it's good to see. But for me it's a little bit too late because most fans have been saying this on Twitter for ages. I know I have on whatever feed that I have as popular and no one cared, right? No one bloody cared. Um because for some football fans, they're not proactive. They want to see our club relegated before we change a manager or before we make some changes in how we recruit or anything. That's what they want. They just want the worst case scenario, then we make a change.